Well, hey everyone, if you saw the announcements yesterday, you know that we're opening up our auditorium this Sunday at First Free Church. In fact, when we uh, mentioned this at the prayer rally last night, people started clapping. So I know a lot of you are excited to get back into the auditorium, and I am too. We've been making a lot of improvements in there, and uh, we've tried to do things in some separate areas to make sure we were accommodating gathering restrictions and being as safe as possible. And I think we've done that, and I think we are at a point where we're ready to go back into the auditorium. Not everybody may be ready to go there, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about that, but I just wanted to send you a, a short message to let you know the details and answer any frequently asked questions that I can. So first, the details. The auditorium will be open this weekend at 11 a.m. for live preaching and music. And we ask that you fill out a reservation so we can make sure we don't go over the county gathering restrictions, and you can do that at efree.org reservations. By reserving a spot, you're also joining the notification list, which will help us in case we find out about any possible virus exposure, and we want to be able to notify you, so please fill that out for us so we can do that and, and let you know. The county public health order mandates that we wear masks and social distance, and we'll have certain rows blocked off to make that easier. We'll also have um, certain sections of the auditorium blocked off just to make sure if there's a a greater chance of exposure there, like from people on the stage. We're going to keep some areas blocked off just to make sure that no one is exposed unnecessarily. Our traditions and Kid Connection venues will stay open. So if you prefer to be in a smaller group of people or like the style of service in one of those venues, you can just keep on going there. We'll keep them open as long as enough people want to go. And I know some people may want to be in a smaller gathering um, that, that might feel a lot safer to them, and I totally understand that. Or they may just like the style of the service. There's nothing wrong with that at all. We'll keep the Traditions venue and the Kid Connection venue open. The Activity Center venue, we think, is probably just going to kind of move into the auditorium, most of those people. So we're not going to have both of those open and competing with each other. We'll have more than enough room for everyone in the auditorium. We won't be encouraging congregational singing yet. Our medical experts tell us that this is not a good idea right now, and so we're going to listen to them. But of course, we will have live worship music, and we invite you to sing to the Lord in your heart. As much as I love to sing, and I really love to sing, I think that God cares more about the worship of our hearts than of our vocal cords. Now also next week after the service, we're going to have a picnic on the corner park. So bring some food and tailgate if you want to. We'll provide ice cream treats at the end for everyone. It's going to be a great time to connect with other people. And we've had many new families start attending our church during the pandemic, believe it or not. Quite a few. Some who have not even attended in person yet. So we have new people that are, that are joining our, our church as regular attenders who are only watching online right now. And so welcome to all of you. Many of you have been able to meet even through Zoom or in person. And some people have started coming to our church during the pandemic entirely. So you may need to meet some new people and make some new friends. You may see people you don't recognize, and that's okay. Welcome them into our church and get to know them, build some relationships with them. The picnic this Sunday is a great opportunity to do that. Now for some frequently asked questions. What about Kid Connection? Well, we're going to launch Kid Connection back up on September 13th. And obviously we're gonna to have to do some things differently to make sure that we follow all the county restrictions and are keeping everyone safe. Our Kid Connection team will send out those details to parents and volunteers so you know what to expect. Just understand, there's nothing we can do in Kid Connection that's going to be absolutely right for every single person. And so what we're trying to do is just give the option. We're gonna give the option for parents that wanna have their kids watched in Kid Connection. We're gonna to try to put in some procedures in place to make sure that everyone stays safe while we do that. Um, but I know some families aren't gonna be ready for that. And, and we get it. That's okay. We just want to give you the option if you are ready for that. And uh, we're planning to give several options for the parents for what they do here as well. So parents may uh, continue bringing their kids to the Kid Connection venue and not putting them into Kid Connection, but watching the service together like we've offered for uh, quite a while now. And many take us up on that. About 50 a week come. Several families will come and watch there. It kind of rotates, so the total number of families impacted is is uh, quite a bit more, but um, we're really excited to have families with kids there watching a service together. Another thing parents could do is drop their kids off 
and then go to the Kid Connection venue. So that would mean they're staying close by. They put their kids in Kid Connection, and then they go watch in that uh, auditorium in Kid Connection so they never are really leaving and interacting with other people in other parts of the church. And for some of you, that might be a really good option. And of course, you could drop your kids off in Kid Connection and then go upstairs to the auditorium venue. We're not going to judge. Whatever you want to do is fine with us. We just want to give you the options. Now, I have some educated guesses about what people are probably going to do and what may be right, but this is all new for everyone. And we've had some surprises along the way that we wouldn't expect. So we would rather just give people the options and let them vote with their feet. And you tell us what makes the most sense for you, and we will adapt along the way as we see what people want to do. Here's another question. What about outdoor services? Well, this is something that we have talked about right from the very beginning of the pandemic with our tech and worship teams and other volunteers and leaders. And there are a number of reasons why we haven't pursued outdoor services. And I won't go into all of it here because hours and hours of conversation has been put into this. There are a lot of logistical challenges to doing that, especially for a church of our size. It would actually be easier if we were a much smaller church. Um, and every time you invest in this, you're taking away from something else. So you've got to think about that as well. There are personnel reasons and, and volunteer challenges to that. Uh, not to mention, you've got the summer heat to deal with and unpredictable weather. The fact that a storm can pop up all of a sudden and it wasn't uh, predicted you know, a few hours earlier, that can happen sometimes. So you, you've got to think about that. And then there's the unpredictability of the county restrictions that can change very quickly. So you could invest several thousands of dollars on the equipment needed to do this well and then learn that gathering restrictions go down to 50 people that week, like total. And then all of that seems like kind of a waste. So you have to weigh those challenges against the other things that you could do with the time and energy and money instead of going down this other path. And, and that would be like having multiple venues indoors where you don't have to worry about gathering restrictions as much because you're in separate places and you already have all the equipment and you have shelter and air conditioning for people. Plus, you can then focus your energy on making your online worship experience better. And that's still where most people will interact with church anyway. So about 15 to 25% are attending churches in person in churches across the country, whether those churches are meeting inside or outside. Uh, that means that 75 to 85 percent of people are watching online during the pandemic right now. And that's certainly true for our church as well. And the churches that focused on outside services saw their online experience, where most people were watching, go way down in quality. Ultimately, most of those bigger churches that tried outdoor services moved away from them pretty quickly. And they didn't get more people than the churches that did indoor services. They might have gotten different people but they didn't get more people out to worship God. So um, I, think, I think having the indoor services has been a good option for us. I think in hindsight, it was, it was a wise way to go. Um, to invest in outdoor services would have pulled away from other things, and I, I don't think the cost benefit would have been there for us from a, from a ministry standpoint. You know, a lot of people talk about ROI, which is return on investment. We talk about ROMI, which is return on ministry investment. And uh, we want to make sure that where we're putting our time and our energy and our resources and our financial resources is going to have the, the most benefit and set us up well as a church for ministry in the future. So with all that said, we're not opposed to doing outdoor services still as an option, but we wouldn't want them to be a replacement for the Sunday morning service or to take away from our online experience where, again, most people will continue to watch whether we go inside or outside. So it's going to depend on the logistics and the personnel, whether we can pull it off. And honestly, it's been very challenging to get all the volunteers we need as it is because so many have either been traveling for vacation or in some cases concerned about the virus and not wanting to come out. So I'm not to turn this into a recruiting pitch, but if you're watching this and you're thinking, well, I'd be happy to help out, we would love to have you join our team, especially if you are tech savvy and you're interested in helping us, we could, we could use people. So just let us know. And if you do like the idea of an outdoor service, we are updating our north patio to be an outdoor overflow. So it's not exactly the same thing as a live service, which takes a lot more stuff to pull off. But very soon, within the next few weeks, not this week, but very soon, you'll be able to join us on the north patio at 11 a.m. And we will broadcast the service live, what's happening in the auditorium, for those who don't want to come inside 
the building. So it's not ready yet, but we'll announce when that's ready. You can stay outdoors. You can use our tables and chairs. You can bring your own chairs if you want to. There'll be a big TV out there. We're putting in place some, some speakers we're installing so that we can have good sound out there and you can listen and watch the service outside if that's something you want to do. Another question would be, will we do communion? And the answer to that is yes, absolutely. In fact, we've been doing communion in our venues all along, and we will do it in the auditorium as well, starting on September 6th. That's our next day for taking communion together. And we're still talking through the best ways to do that. We've had some good discussion about it this morning already, and uh, we will have communion uh, one way or the other, and we'll make it a safe experience so that uh, there's no risk of cross-contamination there. So speaking of safety, what are some safety measures we have put in place? That's another question that you may want to know. When the pandemic first hit, our team went out and bought all the cleaning equipment we needed right away so that we could sanitize our rooms just like the schools and hospitals do. So every room is sanitized. Every hallway is sanitized uh, after we use it. And so they've got stuff where they, our, our facilities team can go in and they can use kind of a fogging sprayer, just like you'd see in a hospital or a school, to just spray down everything and clean it all off. It's all safe uh, chemicals that they use to do the cleaning and uh, we're able to make sure that every room is clean before you come in. We wanna make sure it's a safe place for you and your family to come. We're also going to block off certain rows in the auditorium to keep people from sitting too close to each other or too close to the stage. Of course, the people who are singing and speaking will not have masks on, so we don't want you to be too close to them. And we're gonna block off certain rows so that you don't sit too close to people in front of you or behind you. We're not gonna block off certain seats, and that's been something a lot of people have asked about. And the reason we don't block off certain seats is because not everyone's coming as just one person or two people. Some people come as a family of three or four or five. And so instead of trying to create set aside spaces and block off certain seats for people, what's gonna work better is just to allow you to come in and however big your family is, however big your group is, if you're sitting together because you're in the same household, it's not going to be a problem. Just make sure there's enough room on either side of you to the next group or next person who's not part of your group. And of course, our greeters are going to be there to get the doors for people. So if you want, you should be able to walk into church and go to your preferred venue, sit down and enjoy the service, talk with other people afterward, and then leave without ever having to touch anything. If you want to, you can do that. We're literally, the only thing you're ever touching is just the seat that you're in, and that's it. After that, you don't have to touch a thing. And that's a sad thing to even have to say because at the church, we're all about giving hugs and, and high fives and shaking hands, and that touch is an important part of our connection with each other. And so I, I know how tragic that is to say we're providing a touchless experience for you. Um, but for those of you that are concerned about this, we want to let you know that we've thought that through, and we do want you to be able to to have that. Um, if you don't want to touch anything, we're going to make that possible. We just want you to come and worship with us if you feel comfortable with that and do whatever we can to help you be comfortable with that if there is something we can do. Um, speaking of all of that, our bathrooms are open as well and we've made some changes to make them safer too a, a while ago. So we've got signs there to help with social distancing. All of the sinks and towel dispensers were converted to be automatic um, early on in the pandemic just to make sure that you don't have to touch anything and to keep any kind of possible transmission of anything down as low as possible. Now we do use haze as a part of our lighting on stage. And this is really a preference thing. Lights, when you use them as part of a worship service, can really enhance the, the visual aspect of the worship time. And they can be really beautiful, just absolutely beautiful. Of course, you don't want them to be a distraction. And again, that is a preference thing. Um, but they can bring a depth and an energy to a worship service that uh, when it's not when you're used to it and it's not there all of a sudden it, it can be a really missing element and uh, things can kind of feel a little flat when you don't have that because they really do just add a depth and an energy to it. Now it is a very personal preference kind of thing. I know some people don't like it, some people do like it, and uh, what we what we do is we try to use a little bit of haze to make those lights visible. If you don't use haze at all, you don't get to see any of the lights and the light beams. Um, so we want to use a little bit of haze 
to make those lights visible, but not too much of it. And that has been a constant challenge for us to try to dial that in and get the right amount, not too much. A big part of it is the construction of our auditorium and the HVAC system that's in there, the heating and cooling system. And the way that is designed does not make it easy to use just a little bit of haze and not have it swirl and make clouds and those types of things. So our tech team has wrestled with that a lot and have, have continued to work on that and try to make that better. And we've even found that some of the recent changes to our auditorium have um, opened up our understanding of, of where things were at or where vents were blocked off or things like that that haven't been known about in some cases for years. And hopefully all that will help. Um, but all that to say, it's kind of a preference thing. We do use a little bit of haze in our services for the lighting and uh, and we want you to know that that haze is not really a concern when it comes to carrying a coronavirus. And here's why. Um, it hasn't been studied specifically with the, the new coronavirus yet. I'm sure it will at some point, but it has been studied with other viruses. And for instance, like the flu virus, haze has been shown to inactivate the flu virus. So some people w might be concerned, and, and this question has been brought up, um, is, it a, is it a risk to have any haze? Could that be a carrier for the coronavirus? And it seems like if, if it, any other virus studies are an indication that actually haze would limit transfer of the coronavirus, not help it based on how it interacts with other viruses. So we don't think that that would be a problem. Now, those are the big questions that people have asked. You may have more questions and feel free to respond to my email. If I don't know the answer, I will direct you to the right person. I get questions from people every single day and I love it. So feel free to ask about anything. Uh, people will ask me questions from their devos that morning, wondering, you know, what, what, what about this word? What does this mean or this phrase? Or can you help me understand this? Um, so I, I love that kind of stuff. They'll ask for pastoral advice a lot of times. Sometimes they just have questions about something going on in the church or a, a concern. So I actually get that all the time from people every single day. I try to respond if I can very quickly to any of those, or like I say, I'll redirect them to the person that may know better than me. And so feel free to do that. And all of our pastors welcome communication from you. Uh, in this time, especially, we feel so isolated and so disconnected. You used to be able to just walk up to us on a Sunday morning and get involved in a conversation. And I know because every Sunday before the pandemic, after the service, there would often be a line of many people waiting to talk about things. And, uh, and so we have a lot of conversations on Sunday morning usually. And, and we still have that to some extent after our venues, but, but it's a little different. And obviously most of you are not coming there. So a, a, lot, a lot of people are, but most of you are not. And uh, so you may not have the, feel like you have the access and the availability that you norm, normally would to your pastors. Well, we want you to know that we are here for you. And, and we do want you to be able to communicate with us. So if you have any questions or concerns um, or, or anything like that, please feel free to contact any one of us. And not just me, all of our email addresses are on the website at efree.org. So feel free to go there. And if you have a need or a question, we wanna be there to help you answer your questions as best as we can. Well, don't forget to reserve your seat at efree.org slash reservations. And I look forward to seeing you in person this Sunday in our auditorium. If you're ready to come back, we're ready for you. Hope you have a great week.